to God. Yeah. Right. No, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And as a matter of fact, when Jesus would talk, they would shut up. But but they would not listen. They would not listen. They would not obey. It's obedience. Faith is acting on something that you believe. Let me explain. Really, really easy. Really easy. And I want to I want to get to those. There's somebody there hiding or whatever, you know. It's like this chair right here. Okay. You look at the chair. You look at the chair. And you just sit down on it when you come in. Because you believe that it'll hold your weight. Faith is the act of sitting down because you believe. Faith in God, in Christ, is the act of obeying him because you believe. Are you with me? Yes, sir. If somebody, if somebody is asleep back there, wake them up. No, wake her up. Okay? Because hey, if there's one thing you get, it's this. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. Faith is an act. It's not yes. just, oh, yeah, I believe in Pachuk, Pachuk, you know, yeah, Pachuk, Pachuk. <laughs> you can Pachuk all you want, but if you don't act on it, nothing is going to happen, sisters. <laughs> and where I began my spiritual journey is when a pastor, I was really a mess, it was in Seattle, Washington, just out of the army, I was a mess. And this is what he told me. He said, son, if you don't believe this is true 100%, I can't help you. And I had to make a decision that day. Because I was so smart that I was stupid. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Some of this over here. Yeah, that's right, but... This over here now, and that now. You know, like I said, I had the mind of God. And what I'm telling you is that this is where it begins. You gotta believe it. And if you don't or you doubt it, you're not gonna go very far. It's a spiritual person. Because the life of a Christian is really spiritual. Very spiritual. And what I see in the world, and I'm not going to get started on this because I, I can get really carried away. But what I see in the world, especially in some countries, is they talk about Christ, but they point the hope back into the world. And the, 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 it's like there's all this, this this great life back in the world and you see them all living in these mansions and driving these cars and flying these jets they will have to answer to God but that's not the way we have to learn spiritually because this is true and because we're acting on it so our hope is going to be lifted by Christ from the world to the kingdom of heaven. And that he does. And this is why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Okay? 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And he says, now abide faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And what Paul is saying 
is when you place your faith in Christ and you start obeying the commandments of Christ, then your heart, the love of God, will start to develop in your heart. And when the love of God starts to develop in your heart, your hope will be transferred from this world into the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of heaven is not food and drink. The kingdom of heaven is peace and joy. Amen. Amen. And when your hope is in the Lord, in the kingdom of heaven, what happens then? You begin to walk the walk of love because you are love. Amen. Amen. Because that love in your spirit is released. Now, along the way, you got to struggle. And the struggle is this. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? He's not calling it a body of sin. He's calling it a body of death. Well, whether you believe it or not, sin leads to death, spiritually and physically. It leads to nowhere. And then he says this, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. What does that mean? It's not enough to say Jesus is Lord. You've got to know that he is your Lord. Amen. And what that means is you are his servant. Amen. So when he says stand up and go over there, you stand up and go. The tabernacle is a good illustration, is a good, there's a, a spiritual parallel that the Lord showed me, and this I want to share with you this afternoon, okay, of walking through the tabernacle so that you come to know God. And if just one of you, just one of you, comes to know God from this, and the Lord will smile and be happy. Trust me. Trust me. If just one turns and walks and comes to know God, the Lord will be happy. And that is a fact. <clears throat> So, 8, chapter 8 of Romans, is really a continuation of chapter 7. In chapter 7, we have a wretched Paul. In chapter 7, we have a wretched Patrick. Okay? I have the Spirit of God, but my body and my desires are in the world. And I'm trying to do the law by myself. What does, what does that mean, do the law? It can mean, well, as long as I go to church on Sunday, I'll be fine. <laughs> if that is your motive. The one that will help you is Christ. You go to church so that you're encouraged to know Christ and to fellowship with Christ and to fellowship with your brothers and sisters. Then you grow. <laughs> But the mere act of going there, that's not going to help anybody. You go into a building and you walk out, so what? And this is what happened in the Old Testament with Amos. Uh, 800, 800 B.C. There was a man who lived on the other side of the Jordan River. 
and he grew fruit trees. And he would take the fruits, gather them, 